All right, class. All right, so today we're going to look at binomial probability and expected value. All right, at the nation's uh, baseball batting contest, uh, the uh, oh, sorry, at the national baseball batting contest, the organizers have set up uh, game booths for the contestants. Okay, Richard wants to win a large stuffed animal. The rules of the game as follows. All right, guys, so pay attention. So this is actually going to set you up for your project that's coming up. So you need rules of your game. And your rules need to be ba based on the lessons that are coming up. All right. So uh, here are the rules. OK, if you successfully hit all five pitches, you win a large stuffed animal. If you successfully win three or four pitches, you win a small stuffed animal. If you successfully hit one or two pitches, you win a bat shaped pencil. OK, and if you miss all the pitches, you don't win a prize. OK, um, the game costs three dollars to play each set of five fastballs. OK, so three dollars, get five fastballs. All right. So that's important for setting up your uh, tree diagram here. So you, you have a choice of doing like um, a, a few things. So you can do the tree diagram or you can do like a Venn diagram. It just kind of depends on what's easier to to see. OK, so in this in this bit is tree diagrams a good choice. And that's because of what type of probability this is. So this is something that's called a uh, binomial probability. All right, so binomial probability means you only have two outcomes, okay? So like heads or tails. In this case, we either hit the ball or we miss the ball, all right? So this is a binomial probability, and I'll kind of write it out right here. Um, oh, it's in the title. So binomial probability and then expected value from the video yesterday. Hopefully you know a little bit about what that is. Okay, so what are the possible outcomes Richard can have on his five swings? Explain or show how you arrived at that answer. So we kind of did it for you um, here. And basically, like, you, you get your five pitches, and, you know, here's the, all the combinations of results that can happen. So if you look here, you can hit all five pitches, right? Or you can hit all four pitches but miss the last one. And if you look at the next end of the tree, you can hit the first three, miss the fourth one, but hit the, the fifth one. It's still four out of five hits. So uh, then you just kind of go down the list here and as you can see how the M's and H's start to change and you have one H here with all the M's here. So one hit, you miss the rest and you just keep going. So they pulled the tree apart because this one fans out really big. So here's the miss on the first pitch, first pitch hit, first pitch miss, and then we branched off those two. All right. And then here you can see that, you know, we got some hits. They're in different orders until we get completely just missing everything on this very last uh, one here. OK, so um, if we look at um, question two here, OK, what is the probability of Richard successfully hitting the following? OK, and you're going to do something similar with your probability game. So I'm going to be looking for this to how you're getting your probabilities uh, for the game that you're going to uh, make. All right. So <clears throat> what's the probability of Richard successfully hit the following? OK, justify our answers. All right. So if he hits all five pitches. All right. So I'm going to put probability of five, right, hitting all five. OK, so I should probably put five hits. All right, or five H's in there. OK, so um, if he hits all five, if you count the end of the tree, we only have one outcome where he hits all five. OK, and that's one. And then if you look at all the different combinations, one, two, three, count all the ends, you get um, 32 total outcomes. Or the first hit try is a power of two. And then a power of two. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, tiers. So in other words, so uh, uh, two to the fifth power equals 32. OK, so again, remember, multiply across tiers. OK, so uh, the probability of hitting five. All right. Um, OK, so it's only one time. So it's one out of the total, which is 32. OK. So pretty, pretty simple there. OK, what about four pitches? Well, you go into your tree diagram and then you look at how many you hit four. So um, you count all those um, that you're going to hit um, uh, four. So you start circling, you know, or what is there like an underline on this one? Um, all the hits that have four. OK, and you try to count that one has three. This one has four. OK, this one has three. And you count them up. And if you count them up correctly, all right, of the four pitches, uh, so the probability of four hits, all right, equals there's five total out of all the bunch, so it's five out of 32. All right, so and then three pitches, so probability of three hits, 
All right, it's going to be 10 out of 32. Okay. And again, keyword here is hitting, so that's why we're focusing on hits. Um, of two pitches, all right, there's only two that he has him hitting two of them, so probability of two hits, okay, is also 10 out of 32. All right. And then one pitch, so one hit, all right, is one out of 32. All right. So if you look at our, at our, our thing here, we have hitting only one is one out of 32 there. I'm sorry, five out of 32, I jumped the line. Okay, so I was looking at the tree and you can obviously see that, okay, here's hitting one pitch here and then hitting one pitch here. So please uh, bear with me here. All right, I got a little bit um, cross-eyed. All right, so the probability again of hitting one pit hit is uh, gonna be um, five out of 32. And then I don't know if you've been looking, but look at how it's creating this pattern. And then the probability of hitting zero pitches, probability of no hits, okay, zero hits, um, is going to be one out of 32. And again, looking at your tree diagram, uh, my uh, tablet's not being very responsive. Um, there's only one right there. So there's the one pitch right there the, that he misses everything. Okay, so if you kind of look how it kind of like, makes this tier one five ten repeats then five one okay that's a dead giveaway of binomial probability all binomial probability will work in that pyramid pattern okay so uh binomial okay <clears throat> all right so um so this is also a theoretical probability of uh, there's a couple of key things I want to talk on here and the rest we're just going to pretty much go through here and, and go through it. So there's a theoretical probability, okay, where that's what we're doing now, okay, hit or miss, we're doing the calculations, we're not actually trying it. And then there's an experimental probability where we actually get somebody, uh, some random person from the school and um, give them the five pitches and then just kind of have them do it a couple of times. It's just kind of like what happened in the Mark Roper video. They just kind of observed people. And um, uh, you got the experimental probabilities there. So again, it's experimental and it doesn't really, um, you know, it, it, it's what you're testing there at the time of your sample. Okay, and we'll talk about samples and stuff like that when we get into statistics. All right, so um, theoretical, you know, hit or miss, you run all the numbers um, based on that or like your evenly likely outcomes. But then if you do an experimental pr uh, probability, then you get different numbers in decimals. Well, he hit, you know, two out of, you know, he had, say he had 30 tries, you know, of five pitches and he only hit the ball of all those 30 times, uh, like two times out of, the, out of the 30 chances, you know. So that would be an experimental uh, probability there. So he might have just been a really bad hitter or this person that we picked. Uh, could be a bad hitter. All right, so we got um, theoretical probability and experimental. Okay, so just bring, theoretical is um, basically running the outcomes. Okay, and then experimental is actually having somebody doing it or observing. And here's where the two tie. So there was a POW during the Vietnam War that was captured, and um, he had a coin, so he'd flip it, and then he'd mark um, if it was heads or tails. So let's say you flip a coin 10 times, right? You'll get um, heads maybe eight of the times, right? And then the other two, well, you know, it's heads and tails, binomial probability tells us it should be 50-50, right? Well, here's the thing, since he was a POW and he was there so long, he kept doing this experiment. And once you get larger and larger samples, that probability, that point, whatever, that point eight, you know, he started getting more misses and then some more hits and then some more misses. Well, after you do it enough times, that um, number, that decimal converged, which means it goes, it points to a number and it pointed to 0.5. So that's where the experimental would lead into the theoretical, as long as you do enough samples, all right, that are consistent, uh, excluding outside factors. So, you know, with the probability games, they had to tilt to the things and then like optical illusions with the, uh, the basketball net and all that. So, um, so there's, there's that. So uh, theoretical, experimental, um, or some terms you want to think about. Okay, um, suppose Richard tries 
the game 10 times. All right, so he's going to do it 10 times. Uh, how many times do you expect him to successfully hit the given amounts of times below? Justify your answers. All right, well, great. So the probability of, of him, okay, again, these are the, the hits right here. The probability of him getting five times, right, probability of five equals one out of 32. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that probability and we're going to multiply it by the how many times you played. Okay, and like what Mark Roper did is about how many times people actually uh, they observed do the game. So I'm going to multiply this by 10. All right, so our probability of hitting five balls, one out of 32, times 10 tries to do it. Okay, and this is going to yield a number of uh, 10 out of 32. Okay, or. 0.31 um, chance to win. Okay, so let's look at number uh, the next one. So probability of four hits. All right, so um, well we take the probability of four hits, which is five out of thirty-two, multiply it by ten. Right, that yields fifty out of thirty-two. Right, reduce the fraction, get the decimal. You're going to get one point five six. Now be careful here, because I know what y'all are thinking. All right, Mr. Sandler said probability shouldn't be more than one. Okay, well, this is different. What this is is telling you how many times you expect somebody to win. So these aren't probabilities. These are wins, right? So what are our chances of paying out uh, the, the grand prize here? Not very good. And then how much do we expect to pay out the, uh, the if they hit four balls, the, the, next, the next biggest prize, right? Uh, at least once, okay? So... Uh, we'll get into all this here in a little bit. So let's keep on going. So probability of, you know, um, hitting the ball three times. Of course, that's going to be 10 out of 32. Okay, multiply that by 10. All right, which gives us 100 out of 32. And that is 3.125. All right. Um, <clears throat> and then because it's binomial distribution, we get the same numbers. We're going to get the same um results the probability of two okay probability of one and then the probability of zero hits okay let's put a better two there all right so um we'll see the uh the pattern continue all right so you know again um you know 10 out of 32 times 10 we're going to get, you know, 100 out of 32 again. So that's where it repeats. So 3.125. Uh, All right. Then the probability of uh, 1, right, um, is going to be the same as the next one, which will be 5 out of 32 times 10 yields 50 out of 32, which we know. And these should all be approximate. Uh, so they should all be approximate, it's not equals. Approximate, 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 approximate. All right, let me get a better 32 there. Come on, thing not cooperating with me today. Okay, so the probability of 5 out of 32 times 10 is 50 out of um, 32, which is about uh, 1.56. And as you can see, even with the uh, number of tries, we'll get that same pyramid type uh, reaction out of this. All right, and then um, probability of 0. Okay, well, again, which is 1 out of uh, 10 times 10. I'm sorry, 1 out of 32. Jeez. 1 out of 32 times 10. Then we get the 10 over 32. All right, and that one is about uh, 0.31. All right. So, um, like I was saying earlier, let's do this in a different color. Um, <clears throat> So if you look at this, uh, winning this uh, grand prize of uh, here, we got 0.31. So it's very low to expect to pay it out. Okay, and what we're going to do here is this is going to be the expected uh, expected um, value. Okay, so that's the the thing Mark Rover was talking about in the, in the video. If I can just write it out, right? All right. So, um, 
I really apologize, guys. Let me do this here better. Expected value. All right. Okay. So um, each of these are going to yield something, right? And you're going to kind of use your judgment here because, again, you're paying out these prizes. So you want to know what you're going to be paying out, you know, because what's the whole point of the carnival game? To make some money, right? Okay. So, um, so point three one. Um, how many times do you expect them to win? All right. So uh, even though it's low, it's not zero either. So I would expect to pay that out one time. So I want to have at least one of those, you know, prizes there. If I have P5 this game and I expect 10 people to play it, all right, or somebody gets 10 tries in, on this bet, okay, I better have the prize because there is that chance that he could win. And it's, it's, it's not a good chance, but it's high enough, okay, it's high enough. Like the lottery is like fractions and fractions of a percent to win so like you know but then again even with that you know the state has to have you know the money there okay so i expect to pay out one of those all right 1.56 that's almost two so we expect uh two wins right um uh wins here 3.125 we'll say about three or four you could go either way just as long as you um you know, justify it in, in your in your um, presentation. All right. <clears throat> and then it just keeps continuing. So repeating these. Um, so, right, you know, so 304 and then two and then one. I better write it out here. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> um, with that being uh, said, all right, let's look at number four. Everyone has the same chance as Richard to win. If 160 people play each each uh, the game once, how many large stuffed animals will be won? Explain your uh, reasoning. All right, so to win, start large stuffed animals. So again, you got to go back to your rules. Okay, so that's important when you make up these rules. Um, so you might want to test your things there because if you're giving out like some people like to say like Xboxes, you know, and it's really easy to win your game, like you're not going to make money, right? You're going to be giving a lot of Xboxes or expected to. Okay, so you look at your rules. So to win the um, big prize, it's a probability of hitting all five of the balls, right? So the probability of five equals, um, we know that's one out of 32 times how many people are playing, 160, right? And then we equal that, and that's about um, five uh, large um, stuffed animals. Okay, so going on to number five here. If 160 people play each game, how many uh, small stuffed animals are expected to be won? So, <clears throat> um, with this one, the probability of four. Okay, how many small stuffed animals are expected to be won? Um, we're going to put. Um, Uh, they have to hit uh, four balls, right? Um, so uh, 160 people play, so we're going to get um, 10 out of 32, okay? And then we're going to add five out of 32, okay? Because that's where they win uh, small stuffed animals. There's two of them there, okay? So if you look at the rules, all right, so where's the rule that? Um, you need three or four pitches, right? So um, technically, I probably should say the probability of um, three or four. Okay. That's what wins it. Right. So we're going to add those two probabilities together. All right. So that gives us 15 out of 32. Okay. Still so between one, then we're going to multiply that by 160. Okay. And then we get, uh, we expect to pay out 75, uh, small stuffed animals. Okay. And then on this one, if 106 people play the game once, how many bat-shaped pencils do we uh, plan to give out? So to win a bat-shaped pencil, we got one or two. All right. So again, we got to add. So 5 over 32 plus 10 over 32. Um, make that 10 a little nicer. Okay. So again, we get 15 out of 32 Okay, times the 160. 
There we go. And we're going to, again, 75 uh, bat shaped uh, hyphen uh, pencils. <clears throat> okay, so basically based off the rules there. So we got to put the two probabilities together. Then we can figure out how many of uh, those things we expect to pay out. All right, so. Um, On this one here, all right, if a large stuffed animal costs uh, the game organizer $6, a, a small stuffed animal uh, costs $1, and a pencil costs uh, 25 cents, how much profit do you expect the group to make from the 160 uh, players? All right, so we're going to do a little bit of math here. All right, so let's see here. Um, so large stuffed animals, uh, we expect them to win five of those. All right, so first we need a cost, all right? Um, and the keyword is um, how much profit, okay? So let's talk about profit first. So profit is um, your income minus expenses. All right, and what I'm gonna do first is figure out my expenses. All right, so let's see, expenses. All right, so based on our probabilities. So again, start large stuffed animal, we expect to pay out five of those. How much do uh, large stuffed animals cost? Uh, $6. So we're gonna have um, five times uh, the $6, right? And that will equal uh, $30. Okay, we expect to pay $30 in large stuffed animals so put large s stuffed animal all right so what about a small stuffed animal all right um well we expect to uh give out um 75 of those okay times the cost how much do they cost um what did it say uh one dollar so times the one dollar okay well then that's pretty easy 75 dollars all right. Okay, then um, we have um, the bat shaped pencils, which are 25 cents. All right. And then, um, so uh, BP for bat pencil. All right. So we got um, 75 of those expected to pay out times uh, 0 0.25. All right. So let's do 75 times uh, 0.25. Okay, and we expect to pay out $18.75. All right, so we add all that up. All right, so we got $18.75 plus 30 plus 75. I don't know why I did that weird, but there it is. Add up those numbers, we get $123 uh, uh, per 160 players, right? Again, I am explaining everything. Okay, so it's what I expect you to do. Don't just give me numbers, not tell me what they're for. So for every 160 players, we're gonna ex expect an expense of $123.75. All right, so now let's figure out how much income we're making. All right, so let's do uh, income. All right, so our income is, um, uh, let's go back to our rules. Okay, it costs three dollars to play. All right, for five fastballs. So um, we have 160 players. All right, so we're going to take 160 times our three dollars. All right, and that's going to get us what? Let's take zero times three, 480 dollars. So I think you can tell at a glance we're going to be okay. All right, and I think on the rover video, it was much, much uh, higher, so they were being very profitable. All right, so let's uh, figure this thing out. So for our profit, okay, so profit, okay, we're going to take our income. All right, so we're going to take our $480 minus the $123.75, and that is going to be our profit. Um, so take the 480 minus the 
and we get $356.25 in our pockets. All right, and you are good to go. So tell me, how could you expand this further if you're actually running a booth? All right, what other factors would be there? Not just the probability, but just think of like business-wise, maybe if you're business-minded. Okay, go ahead and answer that. All right, guys, have a great day, and uh, see you tomorrow.